Welcome to Bridges Community Church, where we believe that people matter, truth matters, and the gospel is our only hope. Whether you are joining us for the first time or have been a part of our community for years, we're thrilled to have you here and look forward to worshiping together. If this is your first time with us, or if you've recently started attending our services, we'd love the opportunity to connect with you. Let us know you're here by going to our website, bridges.info, click on connect and prayer requests, and fill out the brief form and someone from our team will reach out. At bridges.info, you can also find resources to help you get to know our church better and find ways to get connected throughout the week. This week, starting tomorrow, will be our annual sports and more camp for students first through fifth grade. Students will participate in Bible lessons, fellowship, and they will have tracks for basketball, table tennis, science, and a maker's track, which includes art and woodworking. Be praying for our students and leaders this week. Are you curious how a Bible translation project can even begin in a remote community without the presence of a Christian church? Join our mission partners, John and Christy, members of Wycliffe Bible Translators, as they share miraculous stories of how God created the Maple Translation Team in Nepal. We will meet over lunch after church on Sunday, July 7th in the Bridges Family Center. Please RSVP to let us know you are coming and to request childcare if needed. For questions, contact Kathy at bridges.church. Men, make sure you have August 17th in your calendar. That's August 17th for our annual Man Day. Beginning at 8.30 a.m., there will be breakfast and fellowship followed by a guest speaker and an afternoon full of activities. This year, our guest speaker will be the former general manager of the San Francisco Giants, Bobby Evans. You don't want to miss Man Day on August 17th. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Bridges Community Church. Let's all stand together and worship. Thank you. 
for joining us for worship. Hey, if we've never had a chance to meet, my name's Nate. I'm one of the pastors on the staff here. We are so glad you were here. And we are so glad that God has done such incredible, great things that we can worship, that we can gather here together and we can lift his name up on high. As we continue our time in worship, as we sing out, sing to that God. Sing to the God who has gone before and done great things so that we can worship together. And as we sing this next song, it's called Revelation Song. It reminds us of those passages in Isaiah 6 and Revelation 4, those pictures of the throne room when all of creation is endlessly singing, holy, 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 as the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Let's sing together.
seat. We're going to have a time of prayer, and uh, I'm going to give you a chance to pray for whatever is on your heart uh, here for just a few moments, uh, but I also want to highlight something that we would like to request prayer. We've got a prayer request uh, for our church for this week, and starting tomorrow morning is our Sports and More Camp. If you're a regular attender here, you probably came in and 
saw the curtains up and our, our lovely uh, beach theme that's only semi-hidden by the piano up here and probably thought, what's going on? But this week is our sports and more camp and we are going to flood this campus with kids. And they're going to be here and we got uh, table tennis and basketball and a maker's track, which is going to be art and woodworking and they're going to be doing activities. They're going to have singing time together. They're going to have Bible lessons together. Uh, but let's pray for the students and uh, if nothing else, let's pray for the leaders. Uh, who are leading this this camp this week. I pray that it's going to be an incredible time. Uh, but also, uh, we know that in a room with this many people in it, there are countless number of prayer requests uh, and reasons that our hearts are heavy. So as we just sang, let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Go ahead and bow your heads, close your eyes, and have a time of prayer, and then I'll close us before we continue our time of singing. Lord, we bow our heads before you and ask for your intervention in our trials and our sufferings. Lord, for all the trials and temptations we face, we come to you. Lord, when we feel discouraged, we come to you. Lord, when we feel down, when our hearts are downcast, Lord, help us come to you. Lord, for the weak and heavy laden, we come to you. Thank you for who you are and we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you that we may be drawn in near to you. And before we end our time in prayer together, God, we remember the Sports and More camp that's coming up this week. God, we pray for transformed lives, transformed hearts. God, I pray that all the kids who are here on campus this week welcomed and safe and I pray that they hear the message of you the message of love and salvation God we thank you for the opportunity to teach these uh, students this week God we pray for energy and health for the leaders and we pray that this week is an awesome opportunity for everyone who attends God, we thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray.
you stand and sing this with us? dismiss our elementary school students to join Miss Alba in the back as they head off to Sunday school this morning. If you are new with us this morning and wondering where all these kids are going, you are welcome uh, to join them and see where they're going, or your students are welcome to stay in service with you. If you want to send your uh, kids with Miss Alba now, you can pick them up in the back of campus at Burkhart Hall after service. And now I'm going to welcome up Dan, who is the lead pastor here at Bridges Community Church, uh, to tell us what's next. Well, hey, uh, if you haven't been with us uh, this summer, 
Um, each week during these summer months, we are hearing from a different one of our elders or a different one of our church staff um, how God has worked in their lives. Um, and so one of the reasons we want to do this um, is to show that God is still in the business of working in people's lives. And he works in very similar ways today as he has worked uh, throughout all time as, and as we see in Scripture. Um, but another reason we want to bring up all of our different elders over the course of the summer is for you to get to know them a little. Maybe you know some of our elders, but not all of them, or maybe you're brand new and you don't know any of them. And so this is a way for you to put um, a face in a story to a name and you can walk up to them after service, they're around um, and you can hear about their lives. One of the things I've noticed as we have gone through this series uh, this summer is that it seems like faith develops in all of their stories. Faith for none of them um, came, came full blast all at once. Faith was a process. Um, and so if you feel like faith is a process in your life that is growing, we do call it spiritual growth. If you feel like that's how God has worked in your life, you're in good company because it seems like that is how God has worked um, both in the lives of our elders um, and in people throughout. Scripture, And we'll definitely see more of a story of uh, process and progress today. And I'm, I'm going to ask Mark Liu um, to come up here. Um, Mark Liu, if you don't know him, is one of our elders, has been serving as a, as a couple of years, year and a half as an elder. Um, and we're grateful for him and to hear Less what you have year. to share, uh, what you're going to share today. But let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for Mark and how you have worked in his life. Um, we pray that you speak through him today as he shares uh, what you have done um, and who you have formed him to be. I pray our hearts and minds would be open to receive your word, Lord. We th pray those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi. If you do not know me, uh, I am Mark. I'm one of the elders on the elder board, as uh, Pastor Ann saying. Uh, recently, I went to visit Reflection, and Bravo Logan asked me a question that I could not answer. You don't hear that from a Christian. <laughs> the question was, how do I come to know Christ? Um, I still couldn't really answer the questions, um, because unlike a normal person, when you accept Christ as personal Savior, you have baptism, you came out refreshed, energized, like brand new, like, wow, this is a reborn situation here. For me, on my Baptist confirmation, it was just another day. <laughs> I didn't feel anything special, anything particular. Um, now, I was born in Hong Kong, and I was baptized as an infant, um, and I have really never gone to church or taught anything about Jesus. Uh, and when I was 15, I went to Arizona by myself. Um, I stayed with an uncle who went to college, so it was natural. He's not a Christian, and I didn't go to any churches neither. Because I was like, okay, I was interested in going to church, but then there's like a Mormon church, there's a Later Day Saint, there's Church of Christ, there's uh, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, Southern Baptist. I was so worried to join a cult, so I was like, no, no, maybe I'll just wait. Um, uh, plus, English was not my, you know, favorite fluent language at the time. Um, but for some reason, God was always in my life, and I cannot explain. That's why I couldn't answer the questions. Maybe during my infant baptism that God already sent His Holy Spirit in me. When I'm aware of things, I always know there's a God. Um, and I had a pretty rough and difficult childhood. My families are not Christian, obviously. I have never met my mom. She left when I was one year old. So my dad is not a Christian and he's busy with his life. You know, so I never really get to learn anything properly. Um, but somehow, somehow God was always teaching me, stay away from drugs, don't smoke, don't drink. He didn't even teach me how to dance, so I, I don't even go to party. So 
I really don't know why, that, but God was always there for me. And because of my interesting childhood, um, he was my buddy. Uh, now, obviously, I'm an introvert. So I was pretty lonely when I, in my childhood. And, but God was always there for me as a friend. Um, when I was sad, I, I shared my sorrow with him. Uh, when I was happy, we rejoiced together. Uh, when I was angry because certain things happened to me, I, I blame him. Now, all these changed when I met my wife. No, no, I mean, she didn't do anything about this, but she was dragged, I mean, she was invited to a campus evangelical fellowship at Berkeley. And of course, being her boyfriend, right, she dragged me along. And that is where I finally know what Christ means to me. What is that relationship between a son and a heavenly father? This is why, where I learn what salvation means, what, what serving means, what, what baptism, what everything. I mean, it was an eye-opener, but I was really concerned because they start with Old Testament. And I was like, well, I... I'm not sure if I was that respectful with the Lord, you know, all my life. Well, I mean, it was during my childhood, and, and I got really nervous until we get into New Testament. I said, oh, praise the Lord. He is a loving, and forgiving God. So I, I'm okay. I was good. Um, but while I was at Berkeley, I joined a church called Berkeley Chinese Community, BCCC, Berkeley Chinese, not Bridges, Berkeley Chinese Community Church. And... That must be a destiny. Um, so what happened is uh, I started serving there. Uh, so for about 30 somewhat years, um, I felt that I have learned a lot uh, through serving God, experience God. And, and that's why today I would like to share uh, some of the aspects of my serving experience with you. First thing first, pray. Yes, pray. Because... I, I need to know that this is God's calling. And it's not because I wanted to, or my pride, or think I can do it, whatnot. Um, and also, I need to know that God does want me to do this, and not because I don't want to do it, I'm afraid. So pray is very important. The next thing really hit me was compassion and love. I was blessed with the Lord who grew up with me, um, he really filled me with compassion and his love. And uh, I'll give you an example. My first uh, serving duty was in um, Berkeley Chinese Community Church. As, as I look at this group of teenagers, um, they don't have anything uh, on a Sunday because we're just warming around, chatting, whatnot. I was like, they look like a group of lost sheep to me where there's no shepherd. Um, and I thought, well, you know, uh, I guess I could start a Sunday school program with them. But now here's the thing. I, I have no teaching experience. I have no gifts in teaching. I have no uh, experience or spiritual maturity for that matter. I just, I was a new Christian, newborn. Well, I would just confirm so I was a new Christian. So I was like, I don't have anything. I have no gift. But it just, well, you know, I'll just hang out with them. I just keep them company. But my, I mean, the amazing thing is we bonded really well. Uh, I was just out of college. We were able to share a lot of experience in the college, high school, uh, and the college pitfalls to watch out for. Uh, and then we learn a lot by studying together in the scripture. We're sharing discussion, and voila, I, it turned out great. It was a wonderful group. But that leads to my next point, faith. Sometimes we think we need to know how to do this in order to take up that task. No, I learned it the hard way, and it's not about me. It's about God. God doesn't need my lack of ability or anything that I have. God just needs me to say yes, so he can work with whatever things we're serving through me, not by me. And the other thing about faith is, you know, we, we have a lot of burdens in our life. Um, you know, you got 
financial responsibility, you know, pay bills, you need to take care of your house chores, um, you know, figure out what to cook every day. Uh, you might have families you need to attend to, your children you want to spend time with. There's just so much stuff in our life. We need to trust God to take care of those. Look back in your life. Situation where it was challenging. How did God work through all those issues? His plan is better than ours. I mentioned partnership next. Um, it's something very important to me because, you know, I'm a man of many no skill. So it's important for me to have a buddy. I was very fortunate. Um, come and eat life group, I met this guy who dragged me into that, literally dragged me into that life group. His name is Joshua Sun. My goodness, this guy, if you want to work with him, it's funny. 120% of the time, he will say yes. The 100% of the time is when I ask him, hey, can you help me? The 20% of the time is like, he saw me doing something, can I help you? So it is wonderful to have someone so devoted and dedicated to be your serving buddy because there are times the tax will be overwhelmed enough that you just, well, or maybe you got busy, but you just can't handle it by yourself. And then you know someone had your back. When things get challenging, discouraging, and it can, you get, we can encourage each other, we can motivate each other. Serving buddy is very important, trust me. Find one in your life group, and man, you'll be a super servant. Lastly, humility. We have to have a mind, a mindset of a servant. Not a, well, I mean, you need to be a leader, but not, not be a bossy leader. Uh, not be someone that walk in and say, you know, hey, I got a plan. Uh, and want this is how things are going to be done. I'll give you an example. The, the recent women uh, ministry retreat. Um, so Jana came over and asked me, said, hey, Mark, would, would you like to cook for us? Because, you know, you've been doing that in Mende. And I was like, you know, I have been doing Mende for a few years, and, and this, this last year is like, me and Josh figure out a great menu. It's like, oh, you know, we got like oh, ham and cheese croissant and pa sticker and not. Oh, by the way, this year, Mende, you're probably going to have the same thing. And I thought, hey, I can do this because I just did it. It looks like those guys love it. So I said, yeah, sure, no problem. A few weeks before the retreat, um, I got an email from Daryl Winslow. He said, hello, Mark, you know, this is what we like on the menu. Uh, egg bites and like yogurt, you know, all this chick food, right? And all this, and it was like, some of them, I didn't even know what it is. I had to Google it to find out what it is. I never seen an egg bite in my life, let alone making one. You don't understand how stressful I am. I'm serious, I was so stressful. I was like, I prayed. Now here, remember I talk about faith, right? I understand God has a plan, and he's going to get it done through me, but I really don't know how to make egg bites. <laughs> and here comes Don, Don Darling. I don't call him Don Darcy, because every time you ask him to help, he will say, yeah, sure. And he'll come in with that little walking stick. Like, I said, dude, you need a new hip. What are you doing here? But he always offered to help. He gave us, say, no problem. He gave us the, the recipe, what to, uh, what to purchase, a grocery list, and and like, you know, literally everything, instruction. So I was like, wow, we're safe. So a day before the retreat, we went and got grocery. Me and Josh spent five hours going to a different location. We got all the grocery. Okay, we bought 10 pounds of meat, the wrong kind. The wrong bacon, the wrong sausage. And I'm, 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 getting, I'm starting to get stressed out. I was like, okay, we got the wrong thing. Don said, no problem. We can just make the batter, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. So he came, he teaches us how to do the batter. You know, we did all that. You know, Mark Chin, me, and Josh, you know, and, and Don, we did all that. It was great. And then Don said, oh, by the way, Martha got COVID. I test negative. I got mask on. But I don't think I should be here tomorrow to go. And then I was like, what, the only person to know how to make egg bite is not going to be here tomorrow? And it was only a few hours before I was like, oh, we pray, of course, we pray. So at 11 o'clock at night, in the kitchen, me, Josh, and Mark Chin were sitting there, standing there, it's like, okay, uh, what are we going to do? 
We just have to pray to make sure the egg bite turn out okay. <laughs> and, you know, I should have tried it first. I don't know what I was thinking. And then God gave us some idea. You know we got 10 pounds of meat, sausage, and ham? What, what, why don't we make a hot dish out of it to make a, another hot tray? Uh, that way we won't waste it. But also, because when you talk about like a retreat, right, you have speaker, you have all these people attending, you have one hot tray of maybe egg bite, and then I'm like, okay, um, let's think about something else. So we figure, let's do another meat dish, and we were able to use it. So we pan fried it, and then we make another hot tray. Great. And then we still worry. See, men of little faith. And then I thought to Joshua, see, no way. Let's make pot sticker. You know, people who actually been to our coffee and snack, it's like, come and eat this whole thing. Oh, let's go have some pot sticker, because it's always there. You know, me and, pa, uh, me and Josh is like the pot sticker man. We always have pot sticker in stock at home. When Costco have been on set, we buy more. If we have more and they're on set, we still buy more. So at 11 o'clock, we have no problem getting pot sticker. So we make pot sticker. Now, to, to, uh, to conclude the story is that um, the next day at the end of the event, there were a few egg bites left and everything almost gone. I consider that a success because used to be just egg bite, but God gave us idea to get three hot dishes and they all pretty much consumed, which means, praise the Lord, he got it done again. Now, what, what's going on with this story? First, we have a problem here. I was so full of myself, I did not pray to ask if God wants me to do this. I'm sure she Jenna said he, it is, but that's another story. I need to pray about it. And that's yet, the other thing is um, humility. I walk into the situation thinking I know how to do this. I didn't know women's is from Venus and men's from Mars, so their food are different. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a, it's a lesson I learned, but more importantly, um, it's that I have to have that humility, that humbleness. I, I need to be a servant to be ready to provide me whatever you need so I can do it, and not I have something in mind and let me do this. Um, and fortunately, the faith part always works because God made it happen. I am certain that God wants us to serve. Um, my 50 somewhat years as a Christian, uh, God had taught me that. Um, and in the scripture, John chapter 21, Verses 14 to 17. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Tend my sheep. Feed my lamb. Serving is not easy because we have a lot of worries in our life. You know, we worry about our financial situation, we worry about our job security, we worry about our children, eating or not eating. We worry about a lot of things. Um, when I was struggling with all my worries in my life, when I started off from college, first job, whatnot, uh, this verse always got me through it. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food, 
body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or do not store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can anyone, by worrying, add an extra hour of your life? As a follower of Christ, there's something very important to me is communication. We, we talk about praying to the Lord. It's like picking up a phone. You call God, tell him all this stuff, and you hang up. How are you going to hear from him? How do you connect with him? Sunday service. Pastor Dan's sermon will provide you answers. You see, the thing is, the, the topic could be something weird or whatever, but God will have a message for you which will address the concerns you have in your hearts. Your fellowship. This is how God reached out to you. How God touched you. How God comforted you. How God, how God encouraged you. Your fellowship, brothers and sisters, sometimes is the source of how God communicates to you. And of course, BSF, Bible study, that's how God communicates with us through scriptures. But nothing... I felt that nothing is more valuable to me than experience God yourself. Imagine when you step out of that comfort zone. Look, listen, this is not my comfort zone. This is not my comfort zone. I don't like that. I stress months about doing this. My comfort zone is in that lazy boy in front of the large screen TV in my family room. That my comfort zone, not this. But when you step out of that comfort zone with being vulnerable of failures, of doing the task at hand, worrying about all the stuff we have that we need to deal with at home in our life. With all that, you step up the plate and serve the Lord, you will experience God in a way you will never fathom. It's a very precious experience. Now, I had the privilege to serve with uh, David Ng, uh, Marion Say, and Joshua Sun, and a couple others uh, to buy groceries for our elderly uh, couple and uh, some shuts in, especially during the pandemic. Um, some of them are no longer with us. Let's not wait until we have time to serve. Let's not wait until... We're less busy. Let's step out of our comfort zone. Trust God with everything we have and walk that path, experience His miracles. Let's pray. Abba, um, for the last few months I've been contemplating what you want me to say. I hope this is your message because if it's not, just ask Pastor Dan to do it. I, I don't want to do this. It's too stressful. But I thank you for walking through this with me. But I, 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 I beg you to help each and every one of us to learn to step out of that comfort zone. Give us that courage to trust you with our life so we can feed the lamb, take care of your sheep, feed your sheep. In your son's Jesus' name we pray. Um, this is valuable time. See, they want to take it from me. I talked too long. Um, Monday, I want to mention Monday because I'm doing this. Bob B. Evans, you, you heard that, right? Invite your friends. Now, I am sorry for the ladies, but if you invite Taylor Swift to come to talk, I'll come. <laughs> if you are interested in any activities that you're really passionate about and you want to lead it on Monday, August 17th, Saturday, please let me know, or actually let the church know. They will relate the message to me. We can hook up. Uh, we would like to provide more activities uh, for our men to connect and bond on Monday. Thank you again for your time.
Thank you, Mark. We are, we are grateful for you um, and the servant heart that God has put in you and how you have shared with us today how God really developed um, the habit of service within you. Um, we pray that your story inspires many of us either to begin serving or to find a new way to serve, to step out of our comfort zones. Um, what, if, if you could tell by some of Mark's stories, he is always serving somewhere around here. Um, in Man Days coming up, you just mentioned, or as a women's ministry event, or taking food uh, to folks who need food, always somewhere serving. But one of the things I've noticed about Mark is it never seems like duty or obligation for him. It seems like he's really serving out of uh, love for others and love for the Lord. As he said, one of the aspects he's learned of serving is this compassion. You serve because you have compassion for others. And that is, that is where it comes from. We do not serve out of um, obligation or guilt. We serve out of love for others and love for God. As we have been loved by Christ, so then we go love and serve others. Um, one of the interesting notes on the story when Jesus says, feed my lambs, is the time that that happens in the, in the biblical story. Of course, Jesus says this, it's, a, it's the end of the Gospel of John, it's after his crucifixion and it's after his resurrection, but it's also after Peter's betrayal. You know, Peter had denied Christ. Peter had disavowed Christ. Somebody came up to Peter and said, aren't you with him? And he said, absolutely not. I do not know that guy at all. Um, and Jesus told Peter that he would do this. He said, you will deny me three times. And sure enough, Peter did. And then here, after that fact, Jesus comes to Peter and he's saying, I still want you to be part of what I'm doing. I still want to include you in my plan. You can be part of my work in the world. Commentators note this as uh, Peter's reinstatement. It's Peter had denied Christ, had bailed on the plan, and then Jesus comes to him and reinstates him. For the three times that he's denied, Jesus comes and reinstates him three times. Feed my lambs. You can be part of what I'm doing. You're included. Three different ways of saying, I'm still with you. I'm still for you. Even though you betrayed me, I am still for your good. You can still do uh, my work in the world. That Peter <clears throat> um, was still loved by Christ, even after his betrayal. And if you see that Jesus is saying something similar to you, after we have betrayed Jesus or denied Jesus or disavowed Jesus, and Jesus knows about it, of course, but he comes and says, I still accept you. I still want to include you. I still want to put you as part of my plan. When you know that um, really you shouldn't be in the plan anymore because you bailed on the plan, but Jesus comes and says, no, I still want you to be included. When you see that he has loved you like that, that is what will motivate us to then serve. Because we betrayed, yet we could still be included. Jesus still served us. And so, if someone betrays us, then we can still love and serve them because we have been loved and served in that way. Um, if you don't know Jesus, if you've never met him, as Mark was describing, we are always wanting to have that conversation with you. We will drop everything else to talk about our favorite person, Jesus. Um, and so you can always find me or Mark or any of our elders or staff um, after our service, and we would love to begin a conversation of introducing you to who Jesus is. Um, Let's, uh, let's pray, and then our worship team is coming back up here to lead us um, in another song. Father, we're grateful for how you hang on to us, even when we are like Peter um, and deny you. We're grateful that you still have a spot for us um, on your team, even when we have walked away from you, Lord. Thank you for pursuing us always. Thank you for giving us work to do. Thank you for letting us be part of how you are uh, remaking the world through our service. I pray that, that we are motivated, Lord, to find new ways to serve others and that we do it out of a, a deep love for you um, and for them. We pray all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together and sing.
blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine hear of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my soul If you are looking for ways that you can serve here at Bridges after hearing uh, some of Mark's story, you can find opportunities on bridges.info, uh, which is where we direct you every week. And there are some service opportunities up there now. Um, and we rotate new ones in as they become available. So that is your one-stop resource to find out everything that is going on here at our church is bridges.info. It is where you can give online. Um, you can also give in the boxes in the back to support both the ministries that we do here on our campus and all of our many mission partners that we support around the globe. Um, we need ongoing uh, contributions and gifts uh, and your generosity so we can turn and be generous to those around us. Also on bridges.info, you can sign up for our newsletter, which is where we stuff all the information, um, and we can't possibly tell you everything that's going on in a service or put it on that website every week. But if you get our newsletter, you can find um, all sorts of updates. It's where you find more uh, family type updates. If someone has passed away, uh, we put those we put those kind of uh, updates in the newsletter. And so you want to know what's going on, you need to also sign up for our newsletter, which you can do on bridges.info. 
Um, well, thank you for being here today. We have enjoyed um, being together uh, in God's presence and singing um, and hearing what God has done um, in the lives of one of our elders. As we go this week, as you go this week, may you see opportunities where you can serve um, to help remake the world into the place that God wants it to be. Go with him.